What's going on guys? Wade here, the Millennial Stone Cleaner. We're out here working on another grave today. This particular headstone is the, the headstone of Nathan Coons, died in 1873. This one is a, a pretty typical situation that we see. It's a, a marble headstone that was sitting on these, these pins and these pins rusted. And as they rusted, it actually split the stone. So this stone actually would have come down like that, would have been parallel, but it fractured inside here. And now we have a V-shaped uh, base to this headstone or the lower part of the headstone. So we're gonna get this back up. We're gonna get these pins out. Pretty heavy guy here. So it's gonna be a little bit of work. I could probably just muscle this back and lay it down. I'm just gonna lay it down on its face and slide it back so I can work in here, but I'd just rather be safe with it. This is heavy. This is, I don't know, five, six inches, probably six inches thick. I've got it hitched here, but I can't get a great bite on the other side um, because it's leaning against this. I wanna safely pull this back and not let it slip and chip on that. So we're just gonna use the hoist here to pull it back. We'll throw a pad between there and then we'll just stand it up for a second and then lay it down right in this space here. And clearly if I screw up, you know, just make sure you let me know in the comments. Now this is a, a six foot sling. It's long, it's too long for what I need. I need like a five foot or four foot, um, but I can't get it behind here easily. So we're gonna get this set up with some fire hose, getting that ready to kind of drop in and then we'll get the pad in. That's okay. The good part about this is that in this cemetery, the inscriptions face that direction. And so this is inverted at this point. So this will give us a chance to swing it around real quick. Just like that. This is a tough repair. Wow, it's probably lost half of the volume here on the base. So we're gonna need to put a pin in this one. Otherwise it's just not gonna work. So as a result of the pin damage that we've got up there, we do have some, some fractures here as well. I'm gonna have to test and see how deep those are. That, oh, if that comes out, that would be, hey, ha ha. Hey. As you saw in the intro, this is the grave of Nathan Coons. He was a farmer, a Quaker, and as you saw, his headstone was broken and laying in poison. Yes, that was poison oak there at the start, and I didn't see that right away. But in an Instagram comment, one of you told me, yep, sure enough, it hit my leg and it was on there just terribly for a month. He was born to Casper Coons and Abigail Pago in 1802 in North Carolina. Abigail, Casper, and their kids traveled for six weeks by covered wagon to the Whitewater Valley in Indiana in September 1808. They became part of a new meeting which was set up on the Whitewater River area in 1809. A meeting will also be Quakers. You don't need to really fill the pinholes. This one still has the pin in it and there's a little crack that's starting there. Probably won't do anything, but I've got some extra epoxy. So if I just put a little ring around here, I'm a little bit comfortable and it'll help with that piece over there as well. Basically, I'm just gonna take this, pancake it on for now. I did a fair bit of work off camera. Um, I needed to focus on this, leveling this, and you guys didn't need to hear me. Uh, using some choice words when I do this. It's just not my favorite part of the job. So this is level, front to back, side to side. We're all good. And then we're all, we'll get this piece set up here. Um, got my lead wedge, my epoxy putty. I've already got some on that, so we should uh, be in good shape. Some of that area in Indiana's first settlers were Quakers from North Carolina, just like the Coons family seeking a good, affordable farmland and moving away from a slave-based economy. We know that the Quakers were the first religious movement to condemn slavery and would not allow their members to own slaves and went on to play a role in the Underground Railroad.
So we're at 20 inches to 21 inches. So I'm gonna put a pin in at 10. So it's gonna be like one second for you and seven months for me. So I'm back out on this Coons project. And what I need to do on this is I needed to re-level it. I've got a new tool it's called the Tombstone Jack and I can fine tune these monuments a lot better with this particular tool than I can with my hoist and, and my bar. So I'm gonna do a little bit of that work this morning and then I'm gonna do some infill into the areas of loss. So what we've got going on today is we're gonna level this again. It's not bad, it's not bad, but I just, because it's so top heavy, I wanna make sure that we're just really, really in a good spot. So we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna infill this area here with a mortar. Sometimes my projects take a little while. This one, seven months. This is Mary Coons. I'm wondering if maybe this is his spouse. This is 1886. Eh, no, the dates are wrong. I'm not sure. You'll find out because I'll do a story on this. So who's Mary? Well, Mary's a daughter, but how did that happen? Well, Nathan married Phoebe Haynes in 1828. She would have been about 16 years old then. Together they had three kids, including Mary. So we have Elijah, Mary Abigail, and Harriet Amanda. By 1850, the family had moved to Polk City, Iowa, and they were living with their three kids. And by then, Mary had a husband, Jonathan Stutzman. You know, this was actually nice. I've used the feet before. <laughs> that lift it from the bottom, but actually I like this clamping. It's a lot easier to set up because you don't have to worry about excavating. Uh, you, can't, you can't handle as much weight with it, but that's pretty cool. So we're gonna do some infill 
into this area here. This was actually originally all solid stone, but uh, at some point in time, the pins rusted out. This is a ferrous metal material and it rusted and it rust jack. Lost the material here, blew out, became unstable. So we're gonna use a product called Lithomex, lime-based product. It's gonna allow us to, to make up that, we'll call it sort of a prosthetic type piece. It's not gonna be structural, but it'll make it look a little better. Wow. So that's what we're looking at, nice white color. They call it aged marble is the color. We do need to wet the stone, make sure we get a nice bond. Otherwise what'll happen is it'll, uh, it's what you have to do with any type of, I'm sure you guys that, that work concrete, same thing, gotta wet the, the surface. So with lime products, you don't want the stone to suck all the moisture out of it too quickly. This is pre-blended as well. So we just talked about 1850. If we fast forward 10 years from there, the family grew in size even more. We had more marriages and grandchildren all living under the same roof. We had son Elijah, who married a woman named Mary, and they had a daughter, Clara Bell. Their daughter, Mary, her husband, Jonathan, who we already spoke about, and their children. We had Harriet Amanda with her husband, Noah Noble Sailor, and their children. That's a lot of people under one roof. So what I'm gonna do, it's gonna leave this as it is. I've used up all the material that I have mixed. I'm gonna let this set up and then we'll do another lift so I can take care of some of these areas that have slumped. So we'll, uh, we'll stop for here for now. We'll do another lift. We'll take care of this. So yeah, I think we're in a good spot. We're on a little rain delay right now. Quick end to the, the infill work, but we're gonna get some topsoil. So the city that I work at has uh, another cemetery where they have a bunker that's protected from the rain and they let me grab gravel and topsoil from here. So let's go get some gravel and topsoil. So that's what's really great about this particular cemetery is that when they, when they dig all the graves, the topsoil, the soil from those graves comes and goes into this bunker here. And so we can use it for, for leveling out areas in the cemetery. And I carry small buckets with me because they fit in the car super, super well. Um, they're small, but it's awesome because they, they fit really well. It's always kind of like a game of Tetris packing this car up. I love it because it holds a lot, uh, but it's small. Maybe one day I'll have a car company that'll sponsor me and I'll have like a big SUV or a truck or something like that. But for now, this is perfect. You guys, it is the next day. We got rained out yesterday afternoon, cold mostly windy but cold but we're going to do another little lift here just kind of roughing this in right now we still have to make corners and i i don't want to mix up too much because it's just how cold it is out here it's pretty decent Okay, that's the mix that I've got made up. So let's pause here and uh, maybe mix a little bit more, but I'll call it good for now. And maybe this afternoon, come out and do another, another lift. We ended up getting a bit of wind over uh, on Sunday. So I was working on this Sunday morning first thing when it was really, really cold out and a bunch of wind that came up. And so I just called it and wanted to protect the, the mortar I had in place. So I wrapped it up in plastic. It was a quick and dirty job. There wasn't anything special about it, but uh, I just had some bags in the car, some ratchet straps and, and clamps and off we went. So this has been here for a few days now. This is the uh, next chance I've had to come out and get after it once the winds died down. So, so let's get this torn down. Put a, I only have a little bit of product left. So let's, uh, let's get another lift on there. Just a little bit of product I've got left and get after it. <laughs> Car up 
full yet, so. This definitely isn't gonna be the most awesome color match in the world. You've got staining going on right here from the pin, and then you've got dirt. So once this cleans up from the dirt, it'll be a better match. It's a bit white, but all in all, not bad. It matches the base a lot better. There wasn't as much staining from the pin damage this year, but I think over time that'll, I think over time that'll work out pretty, pretty fair. So we've just got a little bit of this uh, Lithomex left, so we're gonna get this, this put together. We're just gonna probably work on this, this right side. So we're gonna wet the surface. Otherwise, we're not gonna get a bond there. So, so far we've used about a gallon of this and that's, that's right where we wanna come out to. So we're in good shape there. So these products are expensive. This will be probably just 120 bucks worth of worth of this Lithomex material here. So I do have a Patreon up. If you guys are interested in, in helping out and supporting the channel for products like this and getting more of these resets done, um, I pay for this out of my own pocket. So if you guys wanna help us out, provide some of this material, uh, Patreon, link down in the, the description. You can help us out, join that little community. You get some behind the scenes videos. I talk about what's upcoming on my travels, some extra content for you all, and it, it helps us out quite a lot. So really appreciate all those of you that have been there already. Awesome group over there. Definitely check it out. The cool part about this is that it is shapeable. So after it sets, I'm gonna be able to come back in here with my trowel and I can just trim it off. Not too worried about the finish yet. We'll get there. We'll get there, you guys, hang in there. So I'm gonna try and work on this, this rust stain a little bit, and then there's dirt on the back. So I'm gonna mix up a poultice. This is a stain remover poultice from T-Clean. I've had some success with it, not, not amazing, but I wanted to try it out since we've got dirt on the back and I wanna use this up. So to mix a poultice up, you're just gonna use all of this. I'm just gonna mix it with water. So basically you just mix it up into like a paste. I think we're in pretty good consistency here. And we just put it on the stone and then I'm going to wrap this up with a, uh, with a tarp today since uh, it's supposed to rain later today. And so for the mortar that I've got here, plus this, I'd rather just have it, have it nice and sealed up. You're supposed to have this covered. Um, sometimes you can use like a bag, plastic bag, but a covering over it so that it dries out slowly because it wicks the stain out. It wicks it out as you, as you go along, as it dries out. All right, and this is just dirt. There's nothing more than that. It's just dirt. This is where it was sat down on the ground right here by my knees for many, many years. And so that may clean up naturally over time, but it's gonna take a long time. So since I've got this mixed, I'm just gonna put it on there and use it. Not gonna harm anything. If it works, great. I don't have enough mixed up or with me today to do the whole whole thing, I don't think, but do the best we can. It's messy stuff, but super, super safe, super, super gentle. This is great stuff, so we'll let this, we'll wrap this up and... All right, it's been a couple days now. Let's, uh, let's check this out. Good, so the poultice dried. That's what we want. Just gotta work on cleaning that up today. The Lithomex looks good. All right, let's get after this. I'm not really expecting much from this poultice on the front here. I'm hopeful for the back, but we'll see. Just wanna get a really soft plastic scraper here. Almost too soft, actually.
Well, the good part about this project taking so long is that the grass has started to grow. So I seeded this, seeded this a while ago, but got some grass growing, which is pretty cool. Perfect.